Good morning. Y'all are a fine looking bunch out there this morning. It is Mother's Day. So first, happy Mother's Day to all the mothers. Every mother in here, raise your hand. I'm going to make you stand up. You? All right. Well, first off, thank y'all for putting up with the rest of us. How are you not mother? A little mother. I've heard him call that. That's right. If it weren't for mothers, it wouldn't need any of us be here. Um, we have a... Uh, some uh, a flour as you leave this morning. Uh, go out and grab you grab you a flour and take it home with you. Put it in the ground. It'll grow and do all kinds of stuff on it. I don't know anything about flowers, but y'all tell me. <laughs> I told some I have a black bone, not a green bone. If I get around a plant, it dies. Um, it's going to be a bonus. I'm going to read two songs. I came across a song last night and. There's parts of this that make me think of, of my mother. It's talking about the love of God, but that is reflected in my mother's love for me. So I'm going to read this. It's Psalm 25. In you, Lord, my God, I put my trust. I trust in you. Do not let me be put to shame, nor let my enemies triumph over me. No one who hopes in you will ever be put to shame, but shame will come on those who are treacherous without cause. Show me your ways, Lord. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are God, my Savior, and my hope is in you all day long. Remember, Lord, your great mercy and love, for they are from old. Do not remember the sins of my youth and my rebellious ways according to your love. Remember me, for you, Lord, are good. I think about that with my mom. Don't remember. Please don't remember all that stuff I did when I was a teenager and a kid. Good and upright is the Lord, therefore he instructs sinners in his ways. He guides the humble in what is right and teaches them his way. All the ways of the Lord are loving and faithful towards those who keep the demands of his covenant. For the sake of your name, Lord, forgive my iniquity, though it is great. Who then are those who fear the Lord? He will instruct them in the ways they should choose. They will spend their days in prosperity and their descendants will inherit the land. The Lord confides in those who fear him. He makes his covenant known to them. My eyes are ever on the Lord, for he will release my feet from the snare. I'm going to read this next section. I want you to think. And that's just what I thought of. When I was sick, who did I go to? When I was heartbroken, who did I go to? When I had something going on, who did I go to? It was my mom. There was, I, mean, I can tell you, there, as an adult, there were three years there that were really rough that I had that I, every day, every day. But here it is, verse 16. It says, Turn to me and be gracious to me, for I am lonely and afflicted. Relieve the troubles of my heart. Free me from my anguish. Look on my affliction and my distress and take away all my sins. See how numerous are my enemies and how fiercely they hate me. Guard my life and rescue me. Do not let me be put to shame, for I take refuge in you. May integrity and uprightness protect me, because my hope, Lord, is in you. Redeem Israel, O God, from all their troubles. Thank you, Mama. All righty. Let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning and open our service. <clears throat> Lord, I always say thank you, but this morning I'm, I'm going to say thank you for Mama. Lord, I thank you for your love that is reflected through her so strongly for me, each and every one of us, as we sit here this morning. Lord, I just pray that you bring to our mind all those times Mama has been good to us. And Lord, we thank you for that. We thank you for your love in this world and in, the, in the, the many ways that you show it to us, Lord. As we go into this service this morning, we want you here. We want to feel your love this morning. We want to feel your presence and your touch, your instruction, Lord. So I pray that you just draw close to us, that you speak into our hearts, Lord. And Lord, as we sing songs of praise to you, as we praise your name, as we tell you how much we love you, I just pray that you bend your ear to us to listen to your children as we say these things to you, as we sing these things to you. And Lord, this is your service, so I just pray that you move in a mighty way this morning. And we thank you for it. I pray all these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. And I'll read this as well. Come on up. Psalm 66, 1 and 2 is in our bulletin. It says, Shout to God, all the earth. Sing to the glory of his name. Offer him glory and praise. Good morning. Good morning. Let's turn to page 29. 29. We'll 
sing first and second.
I think about what I am thankful to for this morning, and, and obviously, one is very obvious. <laughs> I'm very thankful for my mom. If you're around me at all, you know that I love my mom. Um, just to, if you don't know that, stick around me for a little bit. We'll figure it out. Yeah, I am. And my mama loves me, which is much more important. <laughs> um, she has, I have a great mom, but I'm also very thankful for my wife. Um, I told her very late, I say late, is it late last night or early in the morning when you get past midnight? <laughs> you know, whichever one it was, I told her happy birthday and I told her thank you very much for being a mother to my children. I'm very thankful for all the mothers that have been in my life. And many of you are sitting in this church right now, by the way. Um, I've had a lot of people that, that have come along and, and a lot of wonderful, godly women that have poured into my life wisdom and love and support. And I'm very thankful for, for all of them. Tell me, tell me something good that's happened to you this week. Or do you want to just say thank you for your mom? Tell me about your mom. Somebody say something good to praise the Lord this morning. Yes, ma'am. Uh, well, I picked the wrong plot of 151 to make a U turn. Oh, no. Uh, I praise the Lord that not only did he protect me, but he protected the person that almost hit me. Absolutely. Absolutely. I can remember my mom. I loved her as much as anybody, as much as you can love her. Mm -hmm. She was everything to me. She left to her. She was 58. Uh, Abdominal and aneurysm to collapse. Yeah, she didn't. And then I had no idea. I walked around the hospital and ward the night before she died. And uh, mm -hmm. I said, we made a devastating, devastating for me. But I remember for the God and Mama who she was and what she meant to me, the reason I am who I am. Absolutely. Anybody else? posted a picture of my mother today on Facebook. So I always called her Bear. Mm -hmm. And uh, thinking of her today and what a godly woman she was and how much she loved the church and serving the Lord. Everybody. She loved everybody. She did. Everybody. I'm thankful for my mom and, and my grandmother. Um, I called Mama May. When the Bible talks about influences, when it, Paul is talking to Timothy and reminding him of, of his, you know, basically reminding him of his raisins, to use the southern term, the people that he points out to Timothy that have shown you the way, shown you how to live, are Timothy's mom and his grandma. Very thankful for our mothers. Prayer needs. Um, we've got a, a whole back of bulls and full of, of people. Um, one that's on there though that to mention is, is Joyce Ganey, passed early this morning. Um, from what I can tell, I haven't got a chance to talk to Rudy, but they did put that out on Facebook. So um, be praying for for Rudy and Julia and, and the rest of the family um, and the loss of Miss Joyce this morning. If you have a need on your heart this morning, you just want to lift up to the Lord. Let's do that together. Let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Lord, once again, I do. I thank you for your love and I said earlier all the wonderful ways that you you show it to us. I thank you for the people that you bring into their in our lives. That you have filled up so much with your love that they just can't help but pour it out on all those around them. I thank you for the wonderful influence of our mothers. Both those that are that are blood related to us and, and those, Lord, that have come to us through the years. Those bonds that we make, Lord, I thank you for godly women who have taken the time to pour your love out on those around them, to, 
to help influence and raise, to give wisdom to, to teach all of us. And Lord, as we come to you this morning, we praise your name for that. We praise your name for the love, for your joy that you give us, for the peace that we can have in you, Lord, for all the good things that you put into our lives, Lord. And Lord, we come to you also with burdens. We come to you with with these things that just come on us in life. As we walk through this world, Lord, your word tells us there will be trials, there will be toil. It's not always going to be easy. We are going to accumulate burdens, but you said you would never leave us nor forsake us. And you have a care and a concern for each one of those burdens that we, that we take on, Lord, and, and you say to give them to you. So, Lord, this morning, we bring these burdens to you. The loss of loved ones, Lord, and, and, and the hole that that leaves in our lives, Lord, I, I just pray for peace and comfort for those that are that are dealing with that this morning, Lord, where bodies are, are broken. Lord, I pray for a touch of healing and as, as people are mending. I just pray that you speed that process along and make it. way that no one can deny that you are in this world. <clears throat> Lord, I just pray for you to move through this world, through your church, through your people, through the world at large, in such a mighty and powerful way that as hard as the world tries to deny that you exist, that they will not be able to. And Lord, I praise your name for all that you're going to do. Lord, I thank you for all the answers to prayer that we can look at. I thank you for your protection and your provision for your people. For these accidents that could be bad, life-changing, for your protection on us. As we get through those things, Lord, I thank you so much for that. Here, I've heard two different stories this morning, Lord, of your, your, your powerful protection in our lives. We thank you for that. Lord, as we go through the rest of this service, I just pray that you... It's your words that we hear from this morning, Lord. That is you that we hear no matter what words that I say that come out of my mouth. Lord, I pray that it is you that speaks into each and every heart in this place this morning, Lord. And we thank you. We thank you for the answers to prayer that we can see. We thank you for all that you're doing. And we thank you for all that you're going to do. And Lord, we give your name all the praise and glory and honor forever. And ever and ever. And we pray all these things in the name of Jesus. We lift up all these burdens to the feet of Jesus. I've said before a few times to various people, I, I'm, <laughs> I, I don't always, and I've got to hear it right here, here more, I don't always like to preach to occasions, if that makes sense. Um, but we try to on different times. Mother's Day, I try to, you know, I always think of, I'm thinking about my mom, and, and so that, that comes to the forward. I have preached a couple of sermons on moms and the Hall of Fame of moms within the Bible and, and how Jesus reflected his mother and how he was raised by her, I believe, in, in his teachings and how he did as well. And, and I preached that, and I was a little bit, as I went through the week, I just, it wasn't coming to me, I'll be honest with you. And I sat down yesterday, and I, I love how God works. In about five minutes, it was, this is what you're going to preach. And really, it's a piece of wisdom from my mother. So there it goes. There's the, <laughs> there is the, uh, the link to a mother this morning. My mother had a lot of phrases. I'm going to move this real quick. It's got to distract me. It doesn't take much to distract me, so i got to do that. My mom has a lot of phrases that I have said over time. And different people in different parts of the country have looked at me kind of strange. Now, they looked at me strange for a lot of different reasons, but sometimes it was for these things. And it's things that I've heard from my mother, and, and I'll just call them Mississippi wisdom, my mother being born and raised in, in Mississippi. One of them, and it's not a phrase that really came to my mind, but one of them is, it's poor frog won't praise his own pond. And I've said that a few times, and I've had people look at me and go, huh? 
And I have to tell them, you know, it's, it, you, you're really not doing great if you can't find something good within your own life to be thankful for. Oh, that makes a lot more sense. Well, it made sense the other way I said it. My mama said it. My mama knows everything. My mother also has told me this a bunch of times, and it took me a while in life to really understand what she was telling me. I got the gist of it because I knew why she was telling me when she told me. <laughs> but to truly understand it, I had to go uh, honestly to the Word of God and, and, and deepen the relationship with God. And the phrase is this, you'll catch more flies with honey than you will vinegar. Now you may have heard that in slightly different ways, but it's very, very true. I want you to turn with me to Romans chapter 12. There'll be a lot of, a lot of different places today. There's going to be a lot of verses that get, get it thrown out, so get a pen and paper handy and write all those down <laughs> if you want to. If you don't want to, you don't have to. But there's a verse here, and I'll read more of the passage later on, but there's a certain verse here that just, it kind of encapsulates all of this in one verse for me. Romans chapter 12, verse 9. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. In the, in the church, and I think we should use these words a lot, a lot of other places, but there are some words that I use that are, that are considered... I think sometimes, I'm going to say this, it's considered dirty words, I guess, outside of the church. And I don't think they're that, they're that bad. But I'm going to say them this morning. I don't want anybody to be shocked. But I'm going to say these three words that come to my mind that, that we have within the church, we need to have within the church, that the world does not want to hear. And they are these. Accountability. Responsibility. And submission. Mm, you get in trouble of those words around in the world today. <laughs> to ask for someone to be accountable for themselves. And we're all, I would say that it's, it's, as I watch, it's, it's really neat to see that the world calls for accountability in everybody else but themselves. <laughs> I want everybody else to be accountable. Oh wait, not me. No, 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 not me. I'm fine. I don't need to be accountable. We all need to be accountable. We all need to be responsible. We need to have some responsibilities for ourselves, for thought for ourselves, and submission. Oh my goodness. We don't want to talk about that. But let me tell you the key to a wonderful and abundant life, we talked about this last week, is submission to God. To let God be that point in our lives that, that I say, let God be the but, that word but, that, that connects you. Your old life to your new life, but says God stands in the middle and says, I've forgotten all the stuff that came before. Let me show you this new creation that I have. The world doesn't want to hear some of the things that the Bible talks about. The world doesn't want to hear the church. But we're called, every one of us, and this is, again, sometimes unpopular, we are called, every one of us, in our own way, to be an evangelist to the world. As we follow after God, we are His children. We are His. We are Christians. We are saved by His grace. We are called to share that with the world. I will say this again later on, but I think it's St. Francis of Assisi that said, go into the world and preach the gospel, and if necessary, use words. We are called in how we live our lives every day to proclaim the love of God. They don't want to hear it. The world doesn't always want to hear it, but we are called to do that. And I've got, I'm, I'm going to say, I've got backup for that. In 2 Timothy, chapter 4, and I'm going to say, why don't I have a bookmark? I always have a bookmark here. This is a, a verse I read, and I have it, it, every Bible that I own, you know, I, most Bibles that I own have that little ribbon in them that comes with the Bible that's attached to the binding. And every Bible that I own right now that has that ribbon has this verse mark in it because I have to read it every once in a while to remind myself of my calling in this world. And it says this. Now, start in verse 2. Preach the word. Be prepared in season and out of season. Correct, rebuke, encourage with great patience and careful instruction. People don't want to be corrected. They don't want to be rebuked. They do want to be encouraged. But great patience and careful instruction says, For the time will come 
when people will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. They will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths. But you keep your head in all, in all situations, endure hardship, do the work of an evangelist, discharge all the duties of your ministry. It says, for I am already being poured out like a drink offering, and the time for my departure is near. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. Now there is in store for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord the righteous judge will award me on that day, and not only to me, but all those who have been long for his appearing. And he keeps going. And we can say, yes, that is a personal letter written to Timothy, but it's written to all of us. As we are saved, as we come to faith in God, we need to live our lives in such a way that we proclaim that to others. And that's not, that's Paul talking. Let's go to Jesus talking. Let's go to those red letters. Those red letters are pretty important. That's why they're red. They want to get our attention. Matthew chapter 28, starting in verse 18, Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. We are called to be evangelists. We are called to share the gospel we are called to talk to people. We are called to stand for what is right. That's why I read the verse I read. It, and it, I'm going to go back to it because it's. I want to make sure I've got this. Love must be sincere. That is first. And that's first for a reason. But it also goes, hate what is evil, cling to what is good. The world today will tell you, well, you're supposed to, everybody will proclaim this. You're supposed to love everybody. You're supposed to like everybody. But what does that mean? It means that you're supposed to give them permission to do whatever they want to do and not say a word about it. The Bible uses the imagery of somebody going into a fire and you snatching them back out. I have thought about this before. If I see somebody who is running headlong towards a cliff and they don't know it's there, isn't it my responsibility to get in the way? I'm supposed to stand for what is right. I am supposed to, it says, hate what is evil. I have permission to hate evil things. But the way I do it has to be right. The way I do it has to be correct. I am called to be an evangelist. I am called to share the gospel. I am called to talk about things like accountability, responsibility, and submission. I am called to call sin, sin. But I can tell you that I have done that wrong in my life. I have used the wrong method. I have heard this statement many times. The church is full of hypocrites. I've been that person. I'll tell you a story that kind of goes to we should stand for our beliefs. That's absolutely important. But how we do it is very, very important. I was at work. It's been years ago. I mean, probably close to 10 years now. And we were having a discussion, and for some reason in the break room, we would get on some, some interesting discussions. I had a friend there at work who had found, I've mentioned him to you before, and I won't call his name just because just I'm not going to call his name. It wouldn't mean nothing to y'all. But I, I said at one time he was as close to a militant atheist as I've ever seen. He was, I wouldn't say he's not an atheist. If we want to make it correct, he was an anti-theist. He was against God. He didn't believe that God existed, and he was against him if he did. But he and I struck up a friendship, and he found a Gideon New Testament, a little brown, small Gideon New Testament that somebody had left in a toolbox. I worked in a machine shop, and the rule was if you left, if you left work, if you quit, and you left your toolbox there for more than about three weeks, then the rest of us went through it. He found a Bible in it, and that's what he took, and I thought, man, that was cool. There wasn't nothing else in the toolbox anyway. <laughs> that's not my problem though. that probably was wrong too but he took that New Testament and he began to read it for the express purpose of, of creating turmoil probably more than anything else 
But we would get on these discussions, and somebody else jumped in the discussion, and he said these words to me. He said, the tithe does not exist anywhere in the Bible. That is something that is man-created. And I said, no, it's not. He said, you can't prove it to me. I said, I most certainly can. But the problem was, I am a hothead, and he continued to kneel me, and he told me later he did it on purpose when I apologized to him for how bad that I got. I got angry. I got very angry. Um, and I can't even say it was righteous anger, you know, because I felt like I was defending the faith, I was defending church, I was defending my beliefs, but I was doing it in such a way that when he says, when, and this man was one of the ones who would say it, when the church is full of hypocrites, I was just proving his point to him. Here I am talking about love and gentleness and respect and all of these things, and I am... If I could, you know, I, if I, my words could have torn flesh, he'd have been dead there on the floor. <laughs> Angry. That's the wrong way to go about this. Because again, I go back to that verse, 12, Romans 12, 9. Love must be sincere. That wasn't love. In Luke chapter 18, we have a parable that Jesus tells. Luke chapter 18, beginning in verse 9. And it says who the audience was. He says, to some who were confident of their own righteousness and looked down on everyone else, Jesus told this parable. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood by himself and prayed, God, I thank you that I am not like other people, robbers, evildoers, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week and I give a tenth of all I get. But the tax collector stood at a distance he would not even look up to heaven, but beat his breast and said, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. I tell you that this man, rather than the other, went home justified before God. For all those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. As I got to know these two men that I was working with, these two that, that one that probably... I caused the argument, but one that started the discussion and the other one who decided to take it up and go a different direction with it. And then me, the, and I'm going to use, at this point I'm going to use a Christian who tore it all down, the hypocrite. As I talked to these two men later to find out what it was that had turned them off to church, and they said, honestly, that's what you were, what you did that day. I've run into too many people in church that acted just like that. That acted like this Pharisee in the story of Luke chapter 18. And that's when I began to really understand the process of really understanding what my mother said with, you'll catch more flies with honey than you will vinegar. Words are important. What we say, the actual words we use, are important. But in life, what I have found is how you say something is often more important than the actual words that you say. I have had people, I would say, try to argue with me. And I argue is kind of a strong word that wants to discuss a point with me. And two different people can say the exact same words, but how they say them will either persuade me or push me farther away. Will either stand me farther into where I am or will persuade me. How we speak is important because as Christians we're called to be different. Let me read a little bit more of this verse. Romans chapter 12, beginning in verse 9. It says, Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor. Serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with the Lord's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless, do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice, mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not think you are superior. 
Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it is possible, as far as it depends upon you, live at peace with everyone. You go down to verse 21. That was ended in verse 18. Verse 81, 21 reminds, do not, over, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Another verse that says something very similar is 1 Peter chapter 3. And beginning in verse 8. It says, Finally, all of you be like-minded, be sympathetic, love one another, be compassionate and humble. Do not repay evil with evil or insult with insult. On the contrary, repay evil with blessing, because to this you were called, so that you may inherit a blessing. For whoever among you would love life and see good days must keep your tongue from evil and your lips from deceitful speech. Turn from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous. And his ears are attentive to their prayer. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. Who is going to harm you if you are eager to do good? But even if you should suffer for what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear their threats. Do not be frightened. But in your hearts, revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect keeping a clear conscience so that those who speak maliciously against your good behavior in Christ may be ashamed of their slander. We are called to do things in a different way. We are called to speak in a different way. We are called to stand up for what is right in a different way than what is naturally in us as a human being. I've said before, I'm kind of like that. I took a personality test one time. And the per you know, there's various different personality tests. And the best way to explain me is to tell you about this personality test. And the shock <laughs> on the person's face who gave me this test. Um, I, I, was, I, was, I was seeing a counselor and to, to try to understand me better that the personality test was a part of this. And there's four animals that are listed on this personality test. There's four different person you know, types by the animals. There's a lion, a monkey, a llama, and a turtle. I don't know why they picked these various these various things, but that, and there was a little bit of shock on this on this poor counselor's face who's trying to deal with me. <laughs> and they look and they see my results and they said, "You are the most turtle person I have ever met in my life. I've never seen anybody score this high in one thing ever." And I was like, "Well, great, I'm extraordinary." But part of the personality of a turtle, because a turtle often ends up being a snapping turtle, <laughs> is that you take it, and you take it, and you take it. And you curl up in that shell, and you curl up in that shell until finally you feel cornered, and then that head comes out, and pain ensues. That's me. I describe myself as a bulldog. If I get a hold of something, and I get upset, you know, bulldog. You just about have it. I don't, I'm not calling for animal cruelty before I get in trouble, but if a bulldog gets a hold of you and clamps down on you, you're just about going to have to break that dog's jaw to get it off of you. I get that way. I can get that way. It's in me to be that way. And that's what happened to me that day at work. But I'm called to be different. I'm called to handle things in a different way. Not to allow things, not to just acquiesce to the world, not to just say, Hey, I tolerate you. You're great. You go do what you want to. But to be able to say with gentleness and respect, listen, I love you. I was a hypocrite. I have been there. I am a person who has walked. I have been a sinner. But I've been saved. And I'd like to show you a better way because the way that you are going on is going to cause you pain, is going to cause you hurt, is going to cause you great harm to you physically, to you mentally, to you emotionally, whatever it is it's going to be. And I'm telling you this because I love you. Because God loves you. I want to help you get into a different place. I want to help you have, show you how you can have life and have it more abundantly. How you can walk with Jesus. We are called to be different. We can show them, yeah, we were hypocrites, but we are no more. Because I stand and I walk in the love of God, and I want to show that to you, too. I have a friend, and I've told you about him several times, and I'll tell it again. 
because this is one of the times I guess I reacted in the right way. He picked on me in junior high, and I will tell you, that, man, junior high is just some of the worst years <laughs> in school. Uh, people may disagree with me. And, uh, my junior high years were not my best years, all right? And I watched my kids go through junior high, and it wasn't always their best years either. It's just a hard time. It's a hard time for kids. There's a lot of change. There's a lot of things going on, trying to find your place in the world. But this friend of mine was not a friend of mine originally. In fact, he made it his mission to make me mad. He made it his mission. He was much bigger and stronger than me. That was pretty much described 90% of the people that I went to school with, actually. But he was much bigger and much bigger and stronger than me. And he would, he would pick on me. He'd grab the back of my neck. He'd pinch. He'd punch. He'd, 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 Charlie horses at that time, they come behind you, just knee you right in the thigh, and you just think, oh, and you can't walk. You get this cramp in your thigh. It's awful. He would do all these things to pick on me. And every time he said, I would pick on you and pick on you and pick on you. And all I wanted to do, he said, I'll be honest, all I wanted to do was break you. I wanted you to cry. I wanted you to get mad. Something. He said, and every time you just look at me and go, oh, man, how you doing today? Or something along those lines. I don't know what it was, but I saw a kindness. Even through all that cruelty, there was a kindness in him. And I, and I saw it. I don't know. I mean, I couldn't have described that to you at 11, 12 years old. But I have a friend now for life. We don't talk a ton, but it doesn't take us long to catch up. Um, we live in different states. But when we show God's love to someone, God's love transformed us. God's love transformed me. And God's love will transform anybody that it touches. I think about that in Peter, but just read with gentleness and respect. We're called to be different. We're called to preach the gospel to the world, and it's necessary to use words. We're called to love people. So as we go outside of this place today, I will say if you are struggling, if you are if you're here today and you're not well sure about this relationship with Jesus, these things that I talk, and this transformative love of God, if that's not really ringing a bell to you, but people being mean to you does, and people that you think are church folks kind of turning you off to church, or if somebody in your life is trying to help you get on the right path, and though you, won't, you don't want to hear it, understand that they're coming to you from a place of love. If that's you, then I, I just pray that you you don't leave this place today without that relationship with God because it's going to make things a whole lot better. If you're in this place today and you've got people in your life that you love, that you want to help, I pray that you leave this place today and you realize you're going to catch more flies with honey than you will vinegar. And to keep on loving that person, to keep on rebuking them where it's needed, to keep on... Yeah. instilling discipline where it's needed but to always do so out of a place of love and respect I just pray that we as, as a church we as God's people reflect him correctly to the world around us so as we go outside of this place today as we end and we walk outside and we go and do different things with our families today or we just sit back and relax. As we interact with people in the coming week, just remember that wisdom from my mom. And you may have heard it from somebody else, but I heard it from my mom. You're going to catch more flies with honey than you will vinegar every time. Let's go to the Lord. Prayer. Lord, I love you today, and I thank you so much for your love for us. Lord, as we go outside of these walls, as we, as we go through our lives, Lord, I pray that you give us the strength to love others. Loving takes strength. Loving is hard. But through you, we can accomplish that, Lord. With your strength, we can accomplish that. So I pray that for each and every one of us, Lord. If any be in this place, Lord, one more time, and I, I beg this of you, if any be in this place and they don't know you, Lord, I just pray that you speak into their heart loudly. I pray that, that they have the strength to make the step that they need to make to come to you, Lord. I know you're standing there with your hands outstretched 
a hand stretched toward them, ready to pull them up, just waiting for them to put their hand in yours, Lord. I pray for that this morning, for any who doesn't know you. Lord, for those that do know you, for those who are walking with you, Lord, give us the strength again to love others, to be a bright light for you as we go out into the world. Help us to treat people with gentleness and respect. Give us the words to say when we have to stand up for what is right. When we do have to rebuke what is wrong. Lord, just give us the correct words to say and, and, the, and the heart to say them in the right way. To show your love. To snatch people from the fire. To keep them from jumping off that cliff, Lord. Just give us the courage and the strength to continue to do that every day. And we love you for it. Just thank you for your word, Lord. Thank you for you. I pray all these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's stand and turn to page 503. 503.